G'day everyone, Jason here with some Master of the Universe Masterverse figures to review. Firstly we have Spikor, Untouchable Master of Evil Combat. So there is Spikor in all his glory. 30 points of articulation from the Revelations cartoon. And then we got some artwork on the side. We got some artwork on the back. And the other figures in this. So that's Spikor. Then we have Man at Arms. So again, Revelation, Heroic Master of Weapons, and there we have the artwork on the back of the packet, and again on the side. Next up we have Teela. So there is Master of the Universe Revelation's Teela, Heroic Warrior Goddess. And there we have her bio on the back, and then some more artwork on the side. And then the final one is Beastman, so Savage Henchman, and there we have the art on the back. So again, there's a lot of sort of dual time periods in this series. So this is the sort of more modern take on Beastman. We've got a couple that are in the old school and a couple that are in the, uh, the new school looks. So let's open them up and take a look at them outside the box. So first up is Beastman, so there he is, he's got some great paint on the face, he's got the uh, the triple uh, ponytail in the uh, the beard, he's got some scars on the chest and hair, um, fingernails painted, like really good job, and uh, uh, darker fur sort of running down the back as well as down his spine, he's got the, uh, the whip in hand which has a very strong looking cord. Um, I love the little sort of the hand grip as well there, it goes into the hand really well. The hands aren't too soft, um, so they get a good grip. And then we, we also get, um, obviously, a couple of fists, and then we get the opposite hand. So we have an open hand and a gripping hand in case you want him to have uh, his whip in the right hand. So let's have a look at the articulation. So we'll just take the, the whip out of his hand. So basically he's um, he's got a ball joint here so he can sort of bend forward. I mean he's supposed to be sort of hunched over but he can sort of come up straight. Uh, his head does jut out a bit so obviously he can get to a good you know looking straight ahead. He can turn sort of left and right. There's a little bit of turn sort of only slight so he's really sort of when he turns he sort of turns his whole head um, there's a waist twist there and the arms standard sort of ball joint they go all the way around twist at the top double jointed elbows which are really good look at that that's that's excellent he can scratch his own beard um, and then he's got uh, joints here at the wrist and can also turn there so yeah a uh, lot of movement in the upper part of the body, which is good. But again, I, you know, you would have him in that hunched down sort of beast, beast you sort of look. He then has the, the cloth, which is just basically a rubbery material. It's, it's fairly solid, but um, it holds its shape there and it's sort of shaped in at the back, which is really nice. Uh, it's got a belt and a little bit of a ragged edge sort of coming over the top and a, a place here, I'm assuming, to hold his... Yep, so you can put his whip on the belt if you want. Um, and then legs, he can kick out, obviously a little bit hindered, but kick out to the side. Oh, he can kick out pretty far. And give the old karate kid a run for his money. Uh, we've got a twist at the top there. We've got a double jointed knee, uh, but because of the fur on the back of his leg, like if you, you turn like that, he can almost kick his, his own butt, but not quite. Um, and then, yeah, as I said, he's got the, the really nice fur and then the ankle uh, bracelet there, and then for, you know, hobbit style feet. Um, so he does have an ankle rocker and obviously a pivot at the ankle. Um, but otherwise, yeah, he's, uh, he's about the same height as all the other figures, but because his torso is sort of more hunched over, he, um, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't sort of probably stand as quite tall. But I think that that sculpt and, you know, the, the hair running down the back, it's just a great looking figure. Um, I hope they do make a classic version as well, but this is, you know, this is top notch. The the paint on the face, 
the little horns running up there. As I said, those scars on the chest. Everything about this figure is great. So next up is Teela. So she's sporting her sort of present day look with the, uh, the short buzz cut on the side and the, the long hair on the other side. Uh, she's got the, uh, the belt and the, the bag on the side there. And then we come with a couple of extra hands, so a couple of gripping hands. So she's got one gripping hand and one fist on, and then you get two more, sort of a relaxed hand and another gripping hand. And then you get the fully extended sort of spear version of her weapon. You get the sword that's, you know, doing a better job than Lego at uh, looking like a, a certain Mandalorian artifact. Um, and then on the back here, I've got the, uh, the trimmed down version. So obviously that's in there and it just sort of flicks out and it can be either a sword or it can be a spear. So yeah, so let's have a look at Teela. So again, I think the paint on the face is really nice. Uh, we've got the body armor there. Again, lots of paint on everything, like little studs are, are painted uh, gold. Um, we've got the uh, bracelets there. And uh, she's got the knee pad, like even the, uh, the gold there and the buckle, that's really nice. Uh, a lot of attention to detail, like there's two tones on the boots and then there's a, a the flap on the top is a, is a different colour and has a bit of a wear to it. Um, yeah, as I said, the, the paint is spectacular on these figures. And then you've even got the fading down on her hair at the back. So again, standard sort of articulation for this line. So she can, uh, she can look down she can turn side to side, so her head is a more of a standard sort of one. Obviously, arm goes all the way up, twist there, double, double elbow. Um, can get a bit more, it's just not doing the second bend, but yeah, you can get a pretty good pose there. Twist at the waist. There is a bit of a torso, so she can go more to the side, so she can sort of dab, I guess. Um, but. Um, Basically, yeah, there's not much rock forward because of the armor and there's not much rock back because again There is that little armor piece there. So that sort of I think it's supposed to obviously join on to the back of her But it, it does move so you've got the twist there at the center as well So as I said, you can turn left and right and then her legs go out Again, pretty good range. They come forward. This is a softer piece with cuts up the side, but it's not as soft as Beastman's cloth, so it, it does sort of get caught, but then she has the double knee. Uh, the back of the boot hits the, the back of her thigh, but she gets a pretty good range there. And then uh, there is a knee, there is a boot cut, so it does twist at the boot, and then backwards and forward and rocker on the foot. So yeah, she's uh, they're all very well articulated and um, we'll see what she can do holding a weapon. So uh, the, the only thing, the, the handle does appear to be very sort of wide for the weapon, but I guess it's to basically take the blade inside when it all sort of compresses down. But, uh, but that is Teela, is now the head of the Mandalorian Order. So up next is Spycor. So he's got the spikes happening and the body armor with the spikes. He's got his club there coming down. So this is his sort of classic look from back in the day, just modernized with the new Masterverse stylings. And then we have his um, harpoon spike for his other arm. So it looks like you actually replace the arm and this plugs in. To, uh, to have his sort of trident, and then you've got the two fists instead. So you've got two gripping hands on, out of the box, and again, paintwork really good, like nostrils painted, the eyes, got the teeth coming around the back. He's obviously doesn't have much paint on the actual armor, but it does appear to be sort of a little sort of speckle to it. If you get it in the right light, it's got a metallic sort of look to it. Uh, they're very hard, like for 
Like I thought this was a sort of rubberized armor and the, for the most part it is, but they're quite solid and the ones on his head are very solid. So, um, and then he's got the sort of loincloth that is a little bit flexible. There's a really nice metallic purple paint there on the belt. And then he's got his weapon, which is just cast in the one color. But again, it has a sort of metallic sheen to it as well. So that is Spycor. And again, he has all the same articulation as the other figures in this line. So I won't go into any real details other than showing the head. So he can sort of look up a little bit. He can turn, he can look down, but he is limited by that collar. So that's probably the only sort of real restriction. Other than that, he's got pretty much full movement. So you can, you can have him sort of with the club or you could um, have him sort of coming at you. Um, but yeah, and uh, we'll see how this pops off. So I don't know if that, that stays on by the looks of it. Ooh, very tight. So that just goes straight in. And now he has his sort of classic toy look. So I think that's how I'd be displaying him. So there is Spycor. So next up is Man at Arms. So Duncan. So he is looking pretty amazing. He's got a metallic blue and, and two different types of blue on the helmet. He's got the stash happening. He's got the armor. And again, there's a couple of different tones of orange on there with a sort of a more metallic version as well as a sort of a, a duller um, matte um, uh, color. And then again, metallic blue around his belt and around the gauntlet on his wrist. He's got the plates on the back of the hand. He's got the mace, and the mace is solid. It's not gonna bend like some of the, the older ones. It is heavy. And uh, coming down, and then he's got the shin guard uh, with the big, uh, the big circular sort of protrusions on there. And then he has the, uh, again, the worn looking leather boots with the strapping around it in the two different tones. So yeah, once again, really nice figure. Uh, he's got the, I do like the fact that he's got the little bit of fur around the sides there. I did like that look. He's got the uh, the red sort of there on the armor, which is really nice. And again, the belt on the back and coming down onto the legs. So as I said, uh, top notch. I can see why they won Toy of the Year because the, the paint work on these figures is exceptional. There hasn't been any issues with any of the ones other than I think Skeletor's face in the first uh, wave probably wasn't it was a very strange color um, and he man at arms doesn't comes with many weapons he just comes with his standard mace but he does come with some more gripping hands he has a sort of more relaxed open hand uh, probably shooing Orko away and then he has fists and the fists have the one has the the, the uh, shield on the back so that it's on his uh, left arm and then he has the plain fist for his right. So that is heroic Duncan man at arms and again he has all the same movement as the other figures. Uh, his head doesn't go back very far because of the helmet but he can look right down so you can get him down into that sort of pose behind the armor so he's protecting the mustache basically that's what it's for so it doesn't get sort of shaved off in battle. He can put that up and keep the uh, the stash down. Uh, the the armor does sort of rock around a bit, and so does the the sort of side armor here. You've just got to sort of wedge it into place when you get him into a pose, but um, it's not too bad. Um, he is a little bit loose here at his leg joint. It's just a little bit sort of ooh, ooh, goes around fairly easy by itself. But other than that, he's um, he does have double, but you really got to stretch him to to get him up but he can sort of have a, a pretty cool pose there holding his mace and otherwise all the same articulation he has he has a torso rock so he can do you know he can do a bit of exercise on a little teapot um, but he can go back a slight way and he can come forward a slight way but not too much but otherwise he's fairly standard and he is rocking this look okay so there is the full 
second wave, I think. Uh, I'm trying to remember the order that they were released in. They've been sitting in a pile of loot with Big Bad Toy Store for so long, waiting for some other things to justify the shipping, but uh, they're finally here. So I think this might be the, the second go around. So um, I think of this wave, um, it's hard to say who my favorite is. Like I'm, I'm going towards Beast Man, but, but Duncan, I think just has everything that Duncan should have and then some. Uh, I, in, despite what you know, a lot of people sort of say, I really do like this look of Teela. I think it's the, the better look compared to her old school sort of look. Um, so I do really like that figure. Um, and you know, Spyco, I mean, they're all really strong figures. I don't think any of them have any issues or problems, but I would probably rank them Duncan first, Beastman second, Teela, and then Spycor. So there you go. That is the Masterverse Revelations uh, Wave 2.